coming back to the discussion about alcohol, which is one that you tried to interject with Bert on, I think your episode that you released last year, yeah. back end of last summer, yeah. I think that really opened a lot of people's eyes to some of the risks of alcohol. I've been kind of flying the flag of it as a, a tool for productivity mm -hmm. for quite a to while. To avoid alcohol. Yeah, that I think when Entirely, you- Entirely, or, or do, you, do you drink at all? Uh, I've brought it back into my life now, but I did- six months sober, three times, and then a thousand days without alcohol too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm seeing right now a huge pushback against unseen, unintentional drinking. And I think that, yeah, your episode last year opened a lot of people's eyes to it. Thanks. I mean, again, I, I don't tell people what to do. I give them the facts and so they can make the best decisions for them. I mean, it's very clear that unless you're an alcoholic and provided you're an adult, that you know, two drinks per week maximum um, is about the upper threshold beyond which you're going to start getting some health de 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 that's called a, that's, that's called a warm up to a warm up in England. Yeah, so I you know I've never been a big drinker. I don't drink. Um, I, I'm lucky that it's not something that's that's a strong draw for me. I, me too. You know, I have friends that are recovered alcoholics, um, and you know their lives are so much better as a function of being sober. But for non alcoholics, I mean, I think everyone should just know the. Uh, the health risks, especially women where the risks for breast cancer and other types of cancers are are elevated so very much. And what was interesting uh, to me about the response to that episode is that I think many people took it, uh, my, the impression I got was that many people took it as permission to finally stop drinking or drink less because they didn't enjoy drinking. And as you so you know beautifully put out on social media, you know, drinking is one of the few activities that if you don't partake, people assume or accuse you of having a problem. And it's just wild. I mean, like, why would that be? And I think that, I think it also make, w once actually I was out to dinner with a colleague years ago and I declined a drinking that evening. I was just talking to the, the visiting speaker and um, she said, God, that's so boring. And I, I, well, first of all, I don't have a problem saying what's on my mind without alcohol, right? I don't have, I don't have a excessive gabergic inhibition. Um, so I'll say what I want to say, um, you know, as, uh, as best I can. But, you know, I think drinkers don't like people who don't drink because it takes the fun out of it for them. Because there's this idea that's, you know, prolific on college campuses. Like if everyone's drunk, that somehow like the entire like vibe of the party is going to take on a new, new flavor. And, and frankly, I remember I went to a, a college, UC Santa Barbara, where at the time people drank a ton, a ton. It discovered alcoholics, you right? Um, and I used to go to parties sometimes. I'd look around and think like everyone here is just blast it. Like if anything happened- Were you drinking? Did you drink in college? Yeah, I drank in college, but not that often. I, I had a habit, and I don't recommend this. I had a habit of going out about once a month and I would tie one on, you know, absolutely. Infrequent, um, but binge. Yeah, I never, you know, I my tolerance to alcohol was always such that I would get drunk quickly and then sober up really fast. So I was drinking late into the night, um, but then I'd sober up really fast. Now, of course, we know the sleep you get after even one drink is vastly diminished. Every and, single person right. that's got an aura right. or a whoop strap right. or something is feeling right. you right now. Um, and I think that alcohol to me um, never felt good. I never liked it. And it was a recipe for, you know, there was a lot of fights. There was a lot of, you know, there were a lot of bad stuff happens when people are drinking Dude, too much. I've, I've, you know, I've drunk run... driving to say nothing of poor decision making. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, it just feels like there's so there's so many better ways to have a good time that 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 alcohol isn't necessary. But I do understand that it's a big part of many cultures, and I do understand that for many people, it's so part and parcel with um, relaxing and with festivities mm. and with feeling comfortable and with drawing a boundary between the normal day and the rest of the day. That's and, interesting. There's and, a ritualistic aspect to it. Yeah, there's this sort of it divides the day in an interesting way. So I'm not judgmental of it. I. But um, for me, I mean, I've, I'll go to a party where people are drinking and just hang out. I'm perfectly good. Dude, I've stood on the door of a thousand club nights in my career, right, as a club mm -hmm. promoter. And I can promise you, for the people that are thinking, I like the sound of this justification, this excuse that I don't need to drink anymore. Dr. Huberman has said mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's not as enjoyable. Nothing good happens in nightclubs after one in the morning. I am... Patient zero, I have the, I am the doctor of late night parties, okay? Mm -hmm. Like that's one of my expertise. Nothing good happens in a nightclub. It's this sort of messy, sloppy, 
fights and kissing people you shouldn't and 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 stumbling all over the place and stuff. If you go out and you don't drink and you go home at one in the morning, I think you probably get to capture about 80% of the enjoyment of the event that you would have done had you have drank, pre-drinks, gone out, done the whole thing. And I got a bit of push. I got quite a bit of pushback from a, a sobriety community a few years ago. I did this thousand days sober as a club promoter, which was, I guess, like a kind of a big deal in, in some regards for like pushing the sobriety community forward. But I was never doing it because I had a problem. I was doing it because it gave me more consistency and more time and more money to spend on things that I cared about. So it was a, a productivity tool, like like the Pomodoro technique, right? Or going to bed on time or mm -hmm. something. And um, they had a little bit of a problem. They had a big problem with the fact that I said, there is something to the enjoyment of drinking on a night out. I think anybody that says alcohol has no role in improving the quality of a night out ever just hasn't been on enough good nights out. Right? There, there are ways that it can improve, kind of loosens people up. It can reduce their inhibitions. If you want to go and dance, you know, you're dancing at a rave or, or at a, a festival, which I think there's one going on quite close to here. Um, if you're there, it's really great. But if alcohol wasn't so widely distributed, I think people would ask a lot more questions. It's like you can't see the wood for the trees, right? You, you don't question it. It's such a, it's baked into the, the fabric of, of just human life. Every single time that I take a like a macro dose but low of psilocybin, one where I can still function. Well, what is what is um, 0 0.75, 0 0.75 to one gram. So, of, that, so that's about it's a little less than half of the macro therapeutic dose for for intractable depression, which so, is something like two point two grams or so. so. So you can still hold a conversation depending on what strain you've got. Mm -hmm. But every single time that I do it, without fail, a thought comes into my mind, which is. Why does anyone drink alcohol? Mm. Why does anybody do it? Because I'll go to bed, my HRV, my recovery is fine. The next day, maybe I'm a little bit tired. Like I've had a lot of like activation. I've been super energetic. Very little hangover. On the evening, I don't do stupid things. It makes me want to say nice things to all of my friends. My thoughts are sharper than they were before. Sometimes they're silly, but they're sharper. And then you compare it with alcohol and it's this kind of sloppy, muddy, very unagile. It's it's just I, I I totally get what you mean when you've taken a little bit of time away from it and you look at it in the harsh light of day. The effects that alcohol gives you just aren't that enjoyable, and it's been folded into people's lives through tradition mm -hmm. and through just anchoring bias and continuation. Yeah, and marketing. You know, the idea that like someone can quote unquote hold their liquor is such like a it's been um, made synonymous with you know, masculine ideals. It's like, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy because we know it also it crushes testosterone levels. <laughs> What's interesting is that, um, you know, I forget who said this, but you know, there's a very different picture of a young drunk versus an old drunk. You know, someone who's been just drinking for too many years, it's not a pretty picture. It's sad. They become infantile. They become really infantile, and um, you know, again, I'm I'm not the anti-alcohol crusader. We did, I did that episode not expecting much of a response, actually. Um, but that shows just how out of uh, out of touch sometimes I can be. I and think it, just to reiterate it, man. I think it gave people the excuse. Mm -hmm. What you yeah. did is you gave people the justification. You legitimized them. It's like the best books tell you something that you already know. It was like they everyone always lots of people always had an idea. I probably shouldn't be drinking. Maybe I don't enjoy it that much. Maybe these aren't my friends. They're just my drinking partners. Maybe I don't like the way that I feel the next day. Maybe my life could be better if I stopped drinking. Mm. There's the justification. Well, I'm happy to hear that for those folks, you know, now that the information is out there. I have um, I was accused several times uh, on Twitter slash X of um, taking all the fun out of parties, in the at least in the Bay Area. But I'll tell you, I grew up in the Bay Area. The good parties ended a long time ago. 